so let's just go ahead and close our eyes and just let your hands rest comfortably on your knees, your thighs. And just take a moment just to assess where you are and how you're feeling on this particular Thursday morning. How's your body? Again, not a judgment per se, just a kind of, okay, well, this is a, that's a little achy. This is this, this is this, rather than a, it's good or it's bad, right? And how about the, the mental body? Is there a particular pace, color, tenor of the thoughts this morning? Maybe, maybe not. And your emotional self, how is it as you come to your mat today? So if you'll bring your hands to Anjali Mudra in front of your heart. As you've checked in with your physical, mental and emotional bodies, whatever information you've gathered there, is there some intention that you'd like to hold around that or around the idea of purpose and however that relates to you at this particular moment? And then as you hold that intention, whatever that is for you, just gently let your eyes begin to open. Namaste. Thanks for coming this morning, ladies. All right, so we're going to start out very gently this morning. So if you're sitting on a blanket, let's take that blanket. And we're going to roll it. So I'm opening it up from the just the, like the fold it's in like this and i'm just going to make that into a roll and if your blanket can be kind of you, you make a roll and then you kind of flatten it out you know like your kind of reminds me of little debbie's you remember little debbie's swiss cakes they were sort of like you know the little debbie version of a twinkie kind of thing all right so you're going to take that roll, put it lengthwise up the up your mat, and then we're going to lay down on it. So don't put your sacrum right up against the end because you may not have enough blanket to support your head. Give yourself a little bit of space between your sacrum and the blanket, and then lay down so that you can have your head on the blanket rather than over it. And I just want you to just hang out here for a moment or two. Once you find your way down, just give your shoulder blades a little draw in toward your spine and down toward your waistline. And just have this little sense of opening up so that there's a, a push out from the back and an opening through the heart center, the front of the body. Just letting your arms be wherever you want to have them so you can have them, you know, just in a kind of a, a lazy cactus or down more towards Shavasana if you prefer, that's fine. So wherever you want to have them. Just, just giving yourself just a smidge of a back bend here as the spine is lifted. So as you checked in with your physical self, have you been doing a lot of physical stuff lately? Right, so it is spring is here officially, and so you might find yourself out in your garden doing a lot of uh, cleanup and preparation and that kind of thing. Uh, and you know, it certainly can uh, can take a toll on the body. Uh, some people start mulching, right? So even just mulching your garden or mulching uh, some areas of your property, right? All that stuff can certainly take a toll on your body as well. So, you know, it could be something like that you've been doing. It could just be you've been out walking more, maybe going for hikes, you know, whatever it is. And you're, you've been really working your body, perhaps. Maybe you've got a rehab project going in your house. So just let yourself be for a moment and just let the, let all those muscles just kind of relax as you feel this gentle kind of push up for the length of the spine. 
And then we're gonna keep your upper keep our upper body where it is. Take your feet, bend your knees, and walk your feet as wide as your mat. We're gonna do some windshield wipers with this elevation underneath the spine. So once you bend your knees, just drop your knees over to the right. Slowly bring your knees to center. Feel how your back is meeting that rolled blanket as you drop the legs from side to side. Because clearly your spine is gonna shift a little bit as your legs take you over. And just let yourself move through the, the back and forth here very slowly. Feeling how your spine just rolls over that soft blanket roll underneath you and how that blanket roll just kind of offers its support as your spine is there, you know, it's, I mean, even the, the metaphor, you know, if you're spineless, right, we know what that means, right? So your spine actually has to work pretty hard to hold you upright, keep you architecturally uh, together, so to speak. So being able to support your spine like this is nice. It just gives it a little bit of downtime so that throughout the day, it's not having to work. And then all of those little uh, connections to the spine don't have to work quite as hard in this particular moment. And it's nice just to give it that a little bit of time off. Maybe just one or two more rounds here. It's just nice to listen to the rhythm of the body a little bit. Now, when you have completed a symmetrical set of these, bring your knees back upright. Okay. Um, now we're going to cross the right ankle over the left knee. So you kind of come into uh, eye of the needle legs, but then we're going to drop the legs with the right ankle over the left knee, drop your legs over to the left. So kind of taking that, uh, that windshield wiper idea a little bit deeper. So having that leg crossed, so to speak, root your right thigh away from you, spreading your toes, just working in the hip. Mostly you can feel the outer hip working, you can feel perhaps a little stretch at the inner thigh, not forcing it so much, just kind of allowing your body to take the shape of the pose. As the legs attempt to open, it's kind of like a supine, somewhat sideways um, fire log in the lower body. And go ahead and bring the legs back up to center. Uncross again and take your left ankle on top of your right knee. And then drop the legs just like this over to the right. So resting the right leg on the floor and perhaps the left leg moves away from you a little bit. Keeping the left foot active, toes are spreading. Relaxing your jaw, relaxing your teeth. All right, and then bring the legs back to center and then cross. Okay, so roll to your side and press yourself up to a seat. And then we're going to take the same blanket and just turn it 90 degrees. So it goes horizontally across the mat. And then we're going to lay back down on it. Now, as you lay down over the blanket now, you want the blanket to be definitely under the bottom tips of the shoulder blades. So it's above the sacrum, underneath the bottom tips of the shoulder blades. And it's really, it's forcing a little deeper back bend in the lower back here. Have your knees bent and just be here for a moment, letting your body just kind of acclimate to it and start to release into it. So we're going to stay here for one minute and see if the body starts to let go. If your body is, is saying, you know, no, this is really it's a little too much, then you can take the blanket out and just maybe have it in more of a gentle fold rather than a roll. Okay. So let's just be here. We're going to try this for one minute. You can have your legs more in a um, constructive rest. You can let the knees rest against one another if you like, but please do have your knees bent. 
I mean, the legs down on the floor might just give that back bend a little too much oomph. Okay, bring your awareness back now. I just notice how does your body feel? Do you feel a little bit more relaxed or do you feel a little tense because you're not, your body's not really letting go, you know, and if that's happening, there's probably good reason for it. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and come out of the pose because I know it's a little intense. Go ahead and roll to the side. On up. Okay, and we'll take this blanket roll. Just go ahead and scoot it out of the way. And we're going to come all the way up to standing now. And just keeping the kind of the effects of the, the passive back bending as we start to move into some sun salutations here a little bit. So let's come on up to mountain pose at the top of the mat and just stand for a moment and just feel the effects of having laid on the floor blanket horizontally and vertically up the back of the spine. Let's inhale, take the arms up and overhead. Bend your knees, set your seat back a little bit, and just slide your hands down your shins towards your ankles. And we'll come back up, so slide the hands up the knees to the shins. Take your arms out and come all the way back up to standing. So we're somewhere in between, like a chair pose and a forward fold as we're doing this. So bend the knees, seat moves back, arms come down, hands to the shins, slide the hands down toward the ankles with bent knees. Slide the hands back up the shins to the knees, arms out and up and overhead, straightening the legs. One more of these, bend the knees, Send the seat back, slide the hands down the shins to the ankles. Maybe this time you allow your chest to come a little bit further forward towards your thighs. Slide the hands back up your shins to your knees. Go ahead and come all the way back up to standing, arms up and overhead. And then go ahead and release, bringing your hands all the way down to the sides. Okay, we're going to grab a strap now and work the shoulders a little bit here. So let's take a strap and we're going to make a loop. Boy, this is a nice long strap. <laughs> when you're making a small loop, you don't need that all that length. We're going to make a strap or loop rather that is wider than your shoulders. Let's see, that's a little bit too narrow. About like that. How about there if you can see that? And then once you get the once you get a loop made, you're gonna put it just below your elbows. And scoot the blunt the buckle off to the side because we're gonna take this up and overhead. It might touch your head, right? Okay. Great, so once you've got your strap there, take it up. Now, if you've got it, if you've got it above your elbows, you're gonna hit your head on it. So slide it down so that it's below the elbows, a little more on the forearm, there we go. And then take it up. So you're pressing it against the strap with the arms as you take the arms up and then bring it down. 
and then bring it straight out in front of you, kind of Frankenstein arms, pull your shoulder heads back and take it up and overhead again. And then bring it down. And then bring it back up halfway, parallel to the floor with the arms, pull the shoulder heads back, and again, take the strap up and overhead while you're pressing your forearms out against it. Now, as the arms come up and overhead, the ribs want to jump forward and lift up. So push back through your inner thighs a little bit, pull your low belly in and up, and see if you can push your lower ribs down while you have your arms up and over your head like this. And then go ahead and release and bring the arms down. Okay, now same loop, you're gonna take that loop behind you. And it doesn't matter so much where you have this on your arms, you can have it right at your wrist, you can have it kind of on the forearms. All right, so now we're gonna kind of combine the legs we did earlier with lifting the arms up behind us. So bend your knees as you're coming into this little bit of a skier pose. Lift the arms, kind of pushing the arms out against the strap as you bring your chest forward toward the legs. Lifting the arms up. And just letting your arms press out against that strap as you lift the arms, but you still pull the shoulder blades down the back a little bit. Still bent knees here. Now hugging in towards your midline, slowly start to come up, letting the arms just drop behind you. Still have the strap on there. We're gonna do it a couple more times. So bend the knees, move the hips back, lifting the arms, turn your palms forward a little bit, and then take the arms up. Pulling the shoulder blades down the back, even though your arms are, you know, it's a little different than having the hands clasped, right? All right, and then we'll come back up to standing slowly. And just one more time. So bend the knees, sit back, start lifting the arms. And then maybe you start to bring the legs a little bit straighter, push back through your inner thighs a little bit, and see if your legs want to straighten. The answer could be no. And you're breathing. And then bend your knees. And just start to lower the arms behind you as you come up to standing. All right, and let's take the loop, loopy strap off of the arms and find your way back to mountain pose at the top of the mat. Turn the palms open and just stand in the effects of what you just did with your shoulders with that strap. It's amazing how little really it takes to really start to affect change, right? So let's inhale, take the arms up and overhead. This time just a good old fashioned Uttanasana forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Again, up to you if you're ready to straighten or not with the legs. Exhale, fold in. Let's step right back with the right foot into a high lunge. Just finding your high lunge position. Trying to move that foot back far enough so that your front knee's over the ankle. Now step your back foot forward and step your left foot back. Find your lunge, opposite leg back. And now step the left foot forward, come up to standing. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Palms together overhead. Now with the palms together, drop the thumbs back behind your head. Hug your head with your inner forearms a little bit. So you are taking a bit of a back bend here. Hug toward the midline with your feet, pushing back through your inner thighs, pull your navel in and up. See if there's just a little bit of room for a little smidge deeper back bend here. And then as you come back to upright, take the arms out wide and a slow, slow, slow swan dive back into a forward fold. 
Bend your knee, step back again with your right foot into a high lunge. Finding your lunge position. Now take your weight onto your right hand and take your left arm up. Just give yourself a nice twist here. And bring both hands to the floor inside of the left foot. Spin your right heel down and walk your hands over to the right. So you have kind of a downward dog upper body and a side angle lower body. And walk your hands back to center and step your right foot forward. Step your left foot back, high lunge. Take your weight onto your left hand and take your right arm up. Come into a wingspan. And just try to keep your back leg strong, roll the shoulder heads back. And bring both hands to the floor inside of that right foot. Spin your left heel down and then walk your hands over to the left and out and forward. As you make sure that you're still tracking your right knee over the center of the foot so that your knee is in a nice safe position. And walk your hands back to center. And we'll step to our first downward dog. Nice to have a little symmetry now. Feel free to root through the heels, roll up on the big toe mounds. All right, now bend your knees quite a bit in this down dog. And then push your hands forward to move your seat back. And as you do that, the heart moves down a little bit. Now try to give your shoulders a little bit more of a lift so they don't collapse as you're trying to move the heart back. And then push your inner thighs back and see about keeping your upper body exactly where it is, but maybe straightening your legs. Really deepening that downward dog position. And then we're gonna do just the opposite. Now bend your knees, round your upper back and shift your shoulders forward over your wrists until you come to kind of a rounded back plank pose. And then straighten your legs and push through the heels, lift your chin, look slightly forward. Push your inner thighs up toward the ceiling and pull your low belly in and up. And then set your knees down on the floor and lower to your belly. Point your toes. Let's just come into a nice sphinx position here. Pushing the knees down, pushing the tops of the feet down and pulling the low belly in and up. Now settle down into your chest a little bit and then turn to look over your left shoulder. See what you can see back there. Can you see the foot? Maybe, maybe not. Get a little neck stretch here. Bring your head back to center. Pull your shoulder heads back, but your ch chest is kind of low. So the shoulder heads are really deep in the back of the socket. And then turn your head and look over your right shoulder. See what you can see back there. And stretch in the neck. and come back to center great so now we're going to come down onto our bellies walk your right hand over to the left we're going to make an x of the arms and slide your left arm underneath your right arm walking your left hand off to the right so you x the arms rest your chin on your upper arm just for a moment so we get a stretch in this in the outer deltoids and shoulders if it's a little too much for your shoulders, you could bring your hands a little further forward so you make more of a capital X rather than a, an extended X. And then lift your chin, walk your hands back, 
and we'll go the other way. So now slide the right arm underneath the left and walk the left over to the right. So you just cross your arms the other way and then rest your chin on your upper arm. And just letting your body receive that stretch. Okay, lift your chin and walk your hands back alongside of your chest. Lift the shoulder heads and let's find downward facing dog. So please lift your right leg up behind you and we'll bring the foot forward right away. Find your lunge leg. Come on up to crescent lunge. Oh yeah, good old crescent lunge. Sit a little deeper in the front thigh. Maybe there's a little room for leaning back. So lift up through the side ribs as you try to bring the shoulder heads up towards your ears a little bit and then see if the heart can come more forward. So remember the feeling of having that strap around your arms, how we started. Arms moving back, heart moving forward. Not so much the head, but the heart. And then release, bring the hands down. Step back to downward facing dog. And then we'll shift forward in that rounded back plank again. So you can do this with straight legs. Shift the shoulders forward until they're over the wrists, tucking the chin. And then lifting your gaze to look forward, push back through your heels as you lift your chin and come into your classic plank. And we'll find our way to the floor. You could set your knees down or not. Take a little cobra this time. And lower down. Curl the toes under, let's find downward dog. And let's lift the left leg. On your exhale, bring it forward and through. Find your high lunge legs. Let's come up to crescent lunge. Let your ujjayi breath really kick in here. Especially these times we were li we're living in, this is gonna be one of the biggest superpowers we have. One of the best tools to have in your pocket is to remember to breathe. And again, maybe you even have the hands a little bit wider if that's more comfortable with the shoulders. And then start to lift up in the side ribs, lift the sternum. Move the arms back as you bend into that front leg. So think about the arms move back, the shoulder heads move back, the heart comes forward. And release, hands to the floor. Downward facing dog. And either hop or step your feet to your hands to come to forward fold. Bowing over the legs. Inhale, lengthen halfway forward, Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale. And fold in. We'll come up to standing. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Bring the palms together. Slide your hands to heart center. And release your arms down. Okay. Warming up. So we're going to find our way to the wall. You don't need to take your mat with you or anything, but it just whatever, wherever you've got a little wall space. Let's find a wall here. <clears throat> We're going to find L pose at the wall. So essentially it's downward dog with your hands on the wall. So you want to put your hands about at the height of your hip bones. That's what's going to help enable you to get somewhat of a right angle in your body between your torso and your legs. Now take your hands wider than the shoulders, not unlike how you had the strap on your arms earlier. 
pushing the hands into the wall, pushing back through your inner thighs, and then rotate your triceps down. Almost like the back of your upper arms are trying to come toward one another. It's like magnetically they're spinning down toward the floor and toward the midline so that you're externally rotating your upper arms and broadening your upper back. And then go ahead and lift up a little bit through your chest. Walk yourself forward toward the wall. And go ahead and bring your toes up really close to the wall. Bring your belly to the wall. And bring your hands behind your head. And lift up through the base of your occiput. And see if you can lean back a little bit without letting the body actually come forward. Pull your low belly in and up as you take a little back bend here. And then bring the hands to the wall and step back again to that kind of downward dog slash L pose. And then just bend your knees where you are, bring your hands to your knees and let your hands slide down your shins to your ankles as you come back to forward fold. At this point, maybe you see if your legs are open enough to straighten, maybe, maybe not. And then bend your knees, slide the hands up the shins to the knees, come all the way up to standing. Okay, so with the wall in front of you now, stand on your left foot. You're gonna bring your right foot onto the wall. It doesn't have to be up too, too high. You're just gonna bring your foot onto the wall and then bend into the knee and start to lean forward a little bit. Now, as you start to bring your weight forward, can you lift the foot up a little bit? So just take your hand underneath that foot on the wall and then see if you can bring it up as you come into kind of a lunge with the foot on the wall. So gravity's just gonna play with your body a little differently here. Now, as you have the foot on the wall, you can hold on to your right ankle with both hands. So I've, I've got my right foot on the wall. If you've got your right foot on the wall, then pull back on your ankle with your hands to bring your body a little closer to the inside of the leg. So we work a little more deeply in this lunge and try to keep your, the leg you're standing on as straight as possible here. You're just working in the hips just a little bit here. Now we're going to step off. Set the foot down, go the other side. So take the other foot up on the wall, not too, too high. Just put it up there. We're not even bending the leg quite yet. Try to square your hips a little bit. So you might even, if you feel like that opposite hip is kind of hiking on you, take the thumb into the hip crease and root it down. And then start to bend it. So the heel is going to pick up away from the wall as you start to come forward, letting your body weight shift as you feel into a little stretch for the hip flexors and the thigh of your standing leg. And then you're going to assist left foot if it's on the wall, bring it up. That doesn't have to go that high, but take it up. And then with your hands, you can take your hands around your ankle and kind of pull back to bring your body a little closer to the inside of the leg. See if you can stay there, back leg as straight as possible. Be kind to yourself, be gentle to yourself. I'm not trying to force anything crazy. I mean, again, it's just basically a lunge. You just happen to be upright instead of down on the floor. All right, and then we'll step away from the wall, and set the foot down. Okay, let's come back to L pose, hands on the wall about the height of your hips. Walk the feet back, pushing the hands into the wall. Hands can be nice and wide. And even turn your hands open a little bit more so your index fingers are pointing slightly away from center. The thumbs might even be pointing almost straight up. So a big external rotation for the hands there. Notice how that affects your shoulders. Pushing back through your inner thighs here. 
Try to keep your neck long as you reach some energy through the top of the head. And then bend your knees and you're going to walk your hands to your knees and come back to your forward fold here. Again, maybe the legs are ready to straighten. Maybe they're ready to straighten even more. So if you want to take your arms into a clasp behind your legs, feel free to go there. If it's not quite happening for you, hands can be even up on blocks if you know you've got tighter hamstrings and that's just going to serve you better on this particular morning. All right, slide the hands up the shins to the knees and then come on up to standing. Okay, so let's come back to the mat now. Step your feet wide. We'll set up for side angle stretch over the right leg. So let's turn the right foot open. Bring your left foot forward a little bit. And we'll bend into that right leg, forearm on the thigh. Open the pose up. Go ahead and take your left arm up alongside of the ear. So that, that pose that we did at the wall, you know, we had a similar situation with the legs, a little different, gravity's working with you a little differently, but the front leg, similar to what you had on the wall. So we've done a little bit of work to prepare for this. Can you let your body sink deeper into the front leg and scoot your back foot back, maybe an inch or two, and then sit a little deeper in the front thigh and pull your right heel isometrically forward while you're trying to spin your toes out. You're trying to externally rotate that foot, but it's isometric, really getting the glutes to work on that right side. Now, while that's happening, we're not forcing the left thigh forward. We're trying to keep it stable. Now, spin the hands down. Since we've got this wider stance, hands to the floor inside the front leg, pick up your back heel, and then set your back knee down. Let's walk this right foot over to the right, turn the toes out, heels on the mat, and then see if you can come down a little bit further. Maybe you just walk your hands a little bit further forward and see how it goes. Just breathing with that. Coming a little further toward the inside of the leg. And then walk your hands in. Spin your right foot back so it's more parallel to the edge of the mat and then lifting up the back knee. We'll spin the feet to parallel, wide distance. So turning your feet 90 degrees to your left and then come forward for Prasarata Padottanasana. A nice sense of length in your spine. So forward folding with wide legs can be such a pleasure <laughs> after doing it with your feet fairly close together for a while. Feels nice and it feels so good just to be upside down, just to have the head lower than the heart. So good for the brain. So good for all the inner organs and systems of the body. All right, and then walk your hands forward, bend your knees, bring your hands up onto your knees. And as you come up to standing, we'll reset the legs for side angle over the left foot. So turn your left foot open, bring your right foot slightly forward. Let's bend into that left leg, elbow on the thigh, right arm alongside of the ear. Yeah, so finding the outer form of the pose, the one that you are very familiar with. And then we're going to scoot the back foot back at least a couple of inches so that it's really there's a lot more space than you normally have and it doesn't take much for that to really feel intense right now isometrically we're going to spin this left foot pull the heel forward it's like you're spinning the toes back the arm stabilizes the leg there's it's not actually going anywhere it's just a feeling to get the glutes to fire up on that left side keeping the back leg stable and strong, kind of pulling those left glutes underneath you. Pull the heart forward, pull the shoulder heads back. 
which we've done a number of times today. All right, and then we're gonna spin the hands down to the floor, picking up the back heel. Set your right knee down, and we'll walk your left foot out to the left, turning the toes out and the heel in. And then with the hips in a more square position like this, walk your hands forward a bit. It's coming to whatever place feels like the appropriate amount for you to come down toward the inner leg. Try to keep the inner, the big toe mound and the inner heel on the ground on your left foot. You know, if you're very comfortable coming to your forearms, don't hesitate to go there. I just think it's, you know, I didn't tell you to get your block, so it's nice to have the option of just walk your hands forward and come there instead. Just settling down into this a little more deeply. Can you settle down into your chest? Breathing. All right, now walk the hands back in. Curl the back toes under, lifting the back knee, then reset your front foot parallel to the edge of the mat. Lift your hips, we'll spin the feet back to parallel wide position here. Back into forward fold, prasarata. And then bring the hands down to the floor and we'll hop or step the feet to a hip distance width. So bend your knees, hop in. We'll come up to standing, inhale, reach your arms out and up, bringing the palms together overhead and sliding your hands to heart center. Okay, so we're gonna set ourselves up for a, um, a pigeon pose, or if you prefer something else, you know what to do. Let's go ahead and set ourselves up for pigeon if you are, if you're game in a downward facing dog. Clearly eye of the needle or deer pose are perfectly fine options. We'll start with the right knee forward. So lifting the right leg, bring your right knee forward, finding your pigeon prep. Once you find the outer form of the pose, feel free to come forward in whatever way works for you as you come towards your pigeon. If you work in your eye of the needle, work the, the sitting bones down and try to keep your pelvis anchored as you draw your legs toward yourself. Walk the hands back in, and we'll step back to down dog. And then we'll come into our pigeon prep on the other side. So lifting your left leg, bring the left knee forward. Finding your pose. Finding a sense of squareness in your hips, maybe pulling back gently in the front knee, forward in the back knee and just letting your body acclimate. You can be wherever you wanna be in terms of what your head is doing. Sometimes it's nice to have support for the head. So you could lift your hands to support your head like this, or you could put uh, blocks down and just rest your forehead on a block. Okay, and then releasing, hands to the floor. We'll step back to downward facing dog. And if you're in eye of the needle, we're just gonna come down onto our bellies now. Now, remember that strap that we had? Let's grab that strap. So if you need to go someplace else to get it, we'll, we'll wait for you.
So a lot of times when we do a thigh stretch, the back foot can be very challenging to reach. And I, I know that this can be a, kind of a troublesome. So you're gonna take your strap and I've unfurled the, the loop that I had. You might keep your loop in there if you like. It doesn't really matter, but you're gonna catch something on one of your feet. So I'm gonna shift the weight over to my right elbow and bend my left leg. I'm gonna take the strap and I'm gonna hook it on my left foot and then bring the strap over my left shoulder. So spreading the toes now with the strap over my shoulder, I'm just gonna push the foot back against the strap. And you can have your hands wherever you like, depending on how long your strap is there, just so that you're getting a nice kind of, lots of mus muscular energy as you're pushing the foot back into the strap. Now, hugging your thighs towards your midline and then actively pull your low belly in and up. So you're really trying to root your tailbone more underneath your body as you're pushing the foot into the strap. Now, if your knee is amenable to a deeper bend, then maybe you bring the foot in a little bit closer. You just pull on the strap and bring it in. Try to keep the thigh on the floor as you do that, pressing the foot back into the strap. Pull your belly in and out. And then just give yourself a lot of slack on that strap as your leg moves back. All right, and then we'll take the strap off of the left foot, switch it around and hook it over your right foot. And you gotta kind of pull on it a little bit so that it doesn't slide down your leg as you're in the process there. Now, once you have your right foot lassoed, bring your thighs to parallel and just spread the toes a lot on your right foot as you push the foot back into the strap. And you don't have a terribly deep bend in that leg but as you're doing this, pull your low belly in and up, root your tailbone down toward the floor, toward your pubis. We're not lifting the leg up, you're just hanging with this here. Now, is it possible if you have a little bit more range of motion in the, the knee bend, can you bring the foot in a little bit closer to your body? And with that, same thing in the low belly, pull the low belly in and up. As you're pushing the foot into the strap, hugging toward the midline, getting a stretch in the thigh, breathing. All right, and then we'll release it. And step out of the strap. Just come down and have a rest so your lower back gets a little bit of space here. Just letting your back relax. And just feeling the effects of that. I'll slide the hands back alongside of the chest and press up to table. All right, now let's go ahead and grab that blanket roll that we started with. Open it up so that it's, um, I wanna do that. Yeah, we're gonna have the blanket like this. And we're going to find ourselves in kind of a gomukhasana position with the legs. So we're going to come up onto the blanket on your knees and you're going to cross your right knee tightly over your left knee. So your knee over knee and then spread your, your feet apart as much as you can. 
we're not going to sit down on anything back there. We're going to walk the hands forward, glue the hands down, and then just drop the sitting bones back. So they're just hovering above your above the floor. Look back at your hips and see if your hips look like they're kind of evenly distributed between your heels. Chances are you've got one leg maybe that's a little bit turned in more than the other. And it's a little hard to get the hips to settle evenly. That's okay. You're just letting the hips sit back there. So we get whatever stretch we get in the outer hips, IT bands, piriformis, Just breathing into it. And as you let your sitting bones settle back a little more deeply, and just, just receiving the stretch. And then go ahead and shift your body forward, coming up onto the knees and we'll uncross. And let's try the other way. So take your left knee over your right knee Spread the toes or spread the feet apart. So you have your, your shins are somewhat a mirror image of one another. And then walking the hands forward, sit your hips back, letting your sitting bones just kind of hang between your heels. Breathing into it, breathing into your stretch. With every exhale, just allowing the weight of the sitting bones to anchor you down a little bit more. It's almost a, a sense of surrender here, as long as your knees are amenable. If your knees are not amenable, then, uh, then you want to sit up on something. And maybe you sit in more of a figure four position rather than this knee over knee position and bring your torso forward. Just another breath here. All right, and then come on forward and we'll uncross the legs. Okay, now that blanket, you had your knees on, fold it up again so that you have some height to put underneath your seat. And I'm gonna sit right on it and we're gonna come into Baddha Konasana now. And we're going to do this with a little bit of support from the strap again. So we'll take the strap and we'll make another loop in the strap. And make it fairly big because you're going to put it over your body. And you're going to slide the strap down so that it sits right above your sacrum not at your waistline, but above your sacrum. So it's low, like low rider jeans from 2005, you know? And then you wanna tighten the strap up. The straps are gonna go over your thighs and then it's gonna go over your feet and, and wrap underneath the outer edges of your feet. And then you wanna be able to tighten that so that what you feel is this great sense of support in your lower back there. Now, you could do this with your feet further forward if your knees don't like to be bent as deeply, that would work as well. So I'm kind of sliding it down so that it really sits just right, right at my sacrum there and gives me that sense of support so my legs will stay here. So now we've got that nice sense of support in the legs and you can just sit up a little taller with a little bit less effort. So you wanna close your eyes now and just kind of feel, can you kind of visualize where the weight is sitting on your sitting bones? Again, this is gonna be different for all of us, especially in this position with the legs. Uh, another alternative I wanna offer you because I know that not everybody is that comfortable in Baddha Konasana. I'm going to loosen the strap a little bit just to show you an alternative, but stay there if you're comfortable with it. 
you could cross your legs instead and just put the strap underneath your front ankle and kind of accomplish something very similar without having the legs going out like that. Just, just saying, it's an alternative because I know that this isn't, isn't a pose for everybody. All right, so once we've found this position, I have to find it again. There we go. Now make sure your sitting bones are elevated so that you have a sense that your sitting bones uh, are a little more exposed, like the buttocks flesh is being pushed up on the edge of the shelf of that blanket underneath you. And then just rest your hands on your thigh or your shins rather. Pull your shoulder heads back, sit up nice and tall. And just see how it feels to be kind of in this container, in this position. Sometimes it just feels nice to just kind of hang out here without pushing it, without trying to do anything else, just be right here. And it's completely your call. If you feel like you want to try to root the thighs toward the floor, not with your hands, you push the feet into one another. And then with the inner edges of the feet very anchored and pressing in toward one another, can you start to rotate the thighs down? It's completely up to you, your thighs and your anatomy. It either works or it doesn't. So just staying upright. All right, and then we're going to come forward a little bit. Just come forward just to, you know, five, six inches. And then see if you can tighten that strap again. Getting that support so you can feel how the strap pulls your sacrum in. Just keeping the spine long. We're not going to bring the chest any further forward. And then just slowly come on up. Let's relax the strap here a little bit, and then we'll step out of it. Okay. Now you can take the strap off of yourself. And we're, we're still going to stay seated up on the edge of the blanket, but we're going to take our legs straight out in front. And taking that strap, we're going to make it a little bit bigger. Put it over yourself again. And then again, the strap's going to go at the sacrum here. Take the buckle to the side and put the strap over your feet. So as we come into this Dandasana. And I'm going to pull the strap so that I really get this sense of a nice pull and lift in my lower back here. It just feels so good to have that support. And it's really valuable to do exercises like this every once in a while. So you have a sense of what you're looking for, right? Because when we do these forward folds over and over again, we're not often aware of what the sacrum is doing. So we want to have a sense that the sacrum is pulling forward as we bring the body forward. So now we're going to come forward a little bit, not a ton, just a little bit. See how it is. And obviously, when you bring yourself forward, you might start to get a little bit more slack in the strap. I want you to continue to feel that strap, not at the waistline. Scoot it down so it's really more sacrum there. And if you come forward, can you tighten the strap just a little bit? So you're not trying to press your chest to your thighs again. You're definitely going to get some hamstring stretch here. But you really have this sense of complete support, pulling the sacrum in and up as you come forward. Nice long spine. Doesn't mean flat back. It just means long spine.
All right. And then we're going to come back up, loosen the strap, keep the strap on yourself, and we're going to come down onto our backs. Now, before you get all the way down onto the floor, scoot the strap up so it's underneath your armpits and then lay down on it. Now, hopefully it's about at the right length so you can take one foot up into the strap. With those straps pushed up toward the armpits, then I've got my right foot up in the strap. I'm going to take my left leg down to the floor and I'm going to tighten the loop so that it holds my foot up for me. And I can take my arms straight out to my sides and just simply be here in Supta Paranushtasana. Now, with your right leg lifted, I hope that everybody is, this is working for everybody. And if it's not, you can just hold it with your hands if you prefer. But it's nice to kind of give your hands a little time off. So now, if you can take, if your right leg is up, take your right thumb into your right hip crease and push it away from you. Just let yourself have that experience of like the super, the super square hips. That right there is, uh, is very, very good for helping to clear low back issues. All right, so now with the right foot up in the strap, hopefully there's no buckle that's going to get in the way for you. So you're going to slide your right foot out along the strap and take the leg out to the side, just like you would if you had your straps in both hands or just having the straps in your right hand here. So just taking the foot out and it's completely supported against that strap. Now the strap may be kind of giving you a little breast smashy, but um, you know, we'll see if we can work with that for a moment here. Getting a nice stretch for the inner thigh. Again, we didn't do a triangle pose today. We didn't do a skandhasana today. We did a wide-legged forward fold, but it's not quite the same. So just hang out with us, letting the foot be out to the side. And then we'll slide the leg back to center and take it all the way over to the left. Same thing here. You could roll over onto your left hip, or if you prefer not to, you stay a little bit more on the back of the pelvis. Cross the leg over to the left to whatever extent works for you and your spine, you know. And the trick here with having this strap underneath your back kind of tucked up toward the underside of the armpits is it really does kind of pull your torso over in the same direction that your leg is going even more so. So it's a little more work to try to root down through your, your shoulder blades evenly here. So try to stay nice and rooted in the back of that right shoulder blade as your right leg's over to the left. And then let's bring this leg back to center. Okay, switch your feet. So take your left foot up, your right leg down. If, you're, if your buckle is in the way, feel free to just kind of adjust that, scoot it someplace where it's not going to disturb you. And you might have to scoot those uh, straps up a little more under the armpits because the strap does tend to move its way down as you're putting pressure on it with your foot. Now let's take the left thumb into the left hip crease and just roll it away from you as you have your left foot anchored in that strap. Just feeling the effects of that really, truly, it's unlike anything else because you're not bringing your chest towards your leg. Your leg is actually coming in toward you without having to use your arms, without having to do a curl up or a sit up. It's uh, or just doing any kind of a, doing it from a forward folding position, you know, so it's it's really a very different 
sensation to get a similar stretch, but using gravity in a very, very different way. All right, and now taking the thumb out of the hip crease or not, see how it feels to maybe keep the thumb in there if you can and slide the left leg over to the left. I can only keep it in there so long before it feels like it's going to bend backwards. So I'm going to take my thumb out of there. Oh, it feels so great. It's just a nice big stretch for the inner leg. Try to keep that right leg nice and grounded. Try to keep the right side of the, of the shoulder blade and the back of the ribs down on the floor as the left leg is going out to the left. And just receive the stretch, letting this happen. Try to have as little effort in your shoulders and your arms as possible, because there's always a decent amount, you know, your grip strength and all. Okay, and let's just slide this left leg back to center, cross it over to the right. You could roll over onto your right hip completely, or you could just go partial ways if the full twist isn't something that your spine is amenable to. So you choose. Trying to keep the hips stacked on top of one another. Again, you could do, you could put your left hand back on the, the top of your hip crease or your thigh and root it away from you. Of course, it's going to deepen the stretch into the IT band and all that. But it also helps to keep this, the hips stacked vertically on top of one another. And ultimately, that does help to keep the back aligned and clear the lower back. Okay, and bringing the leg back to center. Let's go ahead and step out of the strap and just drop the strap over your head. And we have time for two minutes of Shavasana. I can't believe that took as long as it did. So just completely let go for two minutes here. So just take a moment to notice where your mind was. And bring your awareness back to your breathing. And with great respect for yourself, just start to gently find your way back to your seat. You can bend your knees, roll to your side and come on up.
All right, lovely. Once you find your seat, if you'll bring your hands to Anjali Mudra. I send so much deep love and gratitude to all of my teachers. And it's such a, a gift and an honor to be here with you all. So thank you so much for coming to your mat to do your practice today to take care of yourselves. It's so vitally important and I'm so glad you're doing it. Thank you. Om Shanti. Namaste.